welcome to Android Dialogues, where we have bite-sized conversations with people in the Android community. I'm Quinn Twet Dow, and I'm speaking with... Bami Carvalho, nice to meet you. Oh, it's so good to see, so good to see you. Okay, it was a pleasure. Oh, it, it's I'm so happy to see you. It's we're currently in Mountain View for Google I.O., which is one of the only times I get to see one more year. So I'm so happy yes. to get to see you and to get to finally catch you for Android Dialogue. Yeah, finally, finally. It was amazing. Well, well for uh, the audience, uh, where are you based and how did you get started in Android? Okay, sure. I, I am from Brazil. I'm based in Sao Paulo right now. And I work at 99, uh, which is a similar to Lyft, a ride-sharing company in Brazil. I'm working with Android for like... Eight years Long now. Time. <laughs> yeah. Commercially, uh, eight years now. And since then, I've been working more close with design and then uh, close to uh, other also startups and big companies. Mm -hmm. So, which 99 is one of the biggest ride sharing companies in Brazil. So, that's awesome. It's very good. Well, speaking of design, so something that we wanted to talk to you about today as well. I mean, I, and I know like we talked a little bit beforehand mm -hmm. about uh, usually mobile developers tend to have a lot of. Uh, app ideas. I know I have like yeah. a billion. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm sure a lot of people do. And some people are great and, and are able to kind of push forward with their own solo projects. But I know I problem that I have, and we talked about this, yes. is that I have a billion ideas and I want them to be amazing. And I'm an engineer. Uh, <laughs> I don't have any designer training. And so I think I, I get stuck mm -hmm. thinking that I want to build this fantastic thing, you know, something I'm really passionate about, but I don't want it to suck, yes, basically. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so I just keep, keep it like on the back burner. I never get into it because I mm -hmm. feel like, oh, well, I need to take time and Design things or get a designer and get some help, but Walmer, you 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 say that that is that is that you shouldn't do that. That, yeah, that you don't have to wait until you have some magnificent design. To exactly, start. that's not true. Actually, uh, one one of the things that I'm pushing forward right now is to have developers uh, thinking and working as designers because you can see the opposite. For example, I I I met a lot of designers uh, who became developers, like front end developers, web right, developers. Yeah. it's very common. Yes, very much. Is, like and right now we have like Framer and stuff that you can code prototypes like. You can actually code with CoffeeScript and something. Mm -hmm. And we don't have that much on Android. We have a lot of this on, on web. You can see web developers becoming designers and vice versa. Right, right, right. But not on the mobile side. Uh, it's hard to see iOS developers becoming designers. Or mm -hmm. I, it's, it's, it's easier to see uh, designers becoming developers, but not developers becoming right, designers. Right, right, yes. yeah. So what, what we, I want to talk today is like how you can tackle design problems being a developer. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of hitting that mm -hmm. on my... Talk so and talk every time yeah. that I talk about it, it's it's good. It's good to see people uh, actually getting excited about it, but never going for it. Yeah, and, and it's hard. It feels so intimidating, right? Because mm -hmm. I yes. feel like um, I've always had this impression that designers either have like you know innate talent or obviously a lot of times a good you know training and education. And I don't have that. Yes, yes. Um, and I, I feel like I, I have this feeling that. Oh, like unlike development, where you can kind of pick it up and study. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. That design is something I don't know. I've always felt that design yes. is different. Uh -huh. um, but, but how do you get started, Walmer? Like, how like how did how did you, how did you get started and kind of get over that uh, yeah. initial intimid or trepidation? Yeah, it's kind of as I say, it's kind of intimidating because you can see designers with a lot of fancy names and like <laughs> nomenclatures and like saying every time yeah, yeah. a lot of stuff. But you don't need to, to be a former designer, like have a college or something to be a designer. It's the same for developers. So mm, true. Uh, yeah. what, do, what do I like to think about is like every, every time that you have a problem, it's also a design problem. You know, have a development okay. problem, it's almost the, 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 a design problem as well. For example, if you have a sign up page, mm -hmm. you need to like do the sign up, like connections or retrofits and such and such. Mm -hmm. And you also need the, the, the form screen to be to look good, the, the fields right, and such. Right. So every time that you have a development problem, if, you, if you're not back-end developer, mm -hmm. uh, you have a design problem as well. Yeah. So think about the same. For, for example, if you need to fix something uh, as a developer, think in the same way as a, as, as a developer for design fixes. For mm -hmm. example, I want to, to improve this kind of form. How, how can I do that? Mm -hmm. So uh, this can work, this cannot work. I can like do, as I said, uh, we can do like A-B testing, mm -hmm. like to, to, to tackle the problem. Or for mm -hmm. example, if you want to, to get feedback as much as you can before launch stuff, you can mm -hmm. do like alpha, beta stuff, or maybe you can think about design uh, pragmatically, mm -hmm. pragmatically. So you can like don't assume everything before listen to your user mm -hmm. and like have, for example, uh, one thing that's very common to to design thinking uh, study is to have examples from other products. Yeah, yeah. So you can have, for example, uh, how Trello does the, the card thinking, mm -hmm. uh, like the card uh, pile and stacking. Mm -hmm. So if you want to do the same, you can 
be you can see you can see how they they can do the same stuff mm -hmm. and like compare yourself with the same problem mm -hmm. but oh so so kind of finding examples out there yes yes and mm -hmm. like yeah so i guess kind of almost like going on stack overflow or going to like exactly. the docs mm -hmm. and saying oh, okay this is like my problem so let me start with this as a base yes and yes. then add on and then, like and then iterate as i kind of fit my problem yes, more, my yes. more specific problem that, oh that, that's neat that's good because you're, you're not gonna uh got it right in the first time so you mm -hmm. need to like uh I like I like a phrase that say that design design is never done. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's good. It's like development. So you get this kind of first version. And okay, mm -hmm. it's good. How can I do it better? So I'm improving this, improving the font. Maybe the mm -hmm. font is too too small. Maybe I have issue with the color blinding stuff. Mm -hmm. I need to, to fix the colors like mm -hmm. to match color blinding mm -hmm. issues. Or maybe accessibility stuff is not yeah. uh, prepared. Yeah. It's very hard on Android actually to have good apps with good accessibility treatments. Yeah. So. All these things are, are actually design problems. So mm -hmm. you're just fixing them with the, the, the development solutions. But uh, what to summarize, I think uh, when you think about design, you need to think about uh, what the user is getting from your application. For mm -hmm. example, if you're like making a weather application, they mm -hmm. have like thousands of weather applications on the market. How your application will make it better than others? Like mm -hmm. what are you going to fix? Mm -hmm. Or maybe you want to do like some, some sort of assistant for like Google Voice Assistant or something. Mm -hmm. Uh, sorry, Google Assistant. You can do like an application for Google Assistant, like UI conversation and stuff. Mm -hmm. So you can think as a, a user of your own application. Mm -hmm. So you don't need to be a designer, full designer to, yeah, to just, make it. Yeah, just, just think about what you would like and mm -hmm. what, you, what, what you're what you missing from other applications yes, and then exactly. go that way. Mm -hmm. um, I actually wanted to go back for a second. You talked about A-B testing yes. and you, you're, you talked about being pragmatic. Mm -hmm. And I think A-B testing is a good example. Um, so quickly, just for the audience, if they don't know what A-B testing is, mm -hmm. what is A-B testing? Yeah, A-B testing actually, uh, if you want... Sometimes it's very common. Uh, previously, people just launch stuff on the on the market, like mm -hmm. for the 100% oh, of the users, mm -hmm. and and launch it wrong. Like the the feature is not so good, or yeah, maybe, maybe has, the UX is not quite right. Or, UX is not quite right. Yeah. Maybe it has bugs. Uh, you lose money if mm -hmm. the feature is not working. For example, mm -hmm. I had I had some issues in a previous company that we launched a, a paid system, a payment system, mm -hmm. which was broken without A/B testing or like feature toggle. Mm -hmm. So the A/B testing is a way that you can test. Uh, maybe two or more options, mm -hmm. which one is converting more. So you can yeah. do this A-B testing, even using like Firebase or stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. You can have this kind of option for free. Mm -hmm. It's incredible because uh, in the logical perspective, it's like the same, just changing the color board. Mm -hmm. uh, psychological uh, effects uh, actually tends the user to, to go to the green button more or maybe right. the blue button more. Yeah. As, you cannot assume that, so you can need to test. Mm -hmm. So A-B testing is good, so you can try two or three options of the same thing. Mm -hmm. And then you can see the metrics if the user is getting more uh, involved with this kind of approach. Right, of and more engagement, approach. yeah. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really cool because, like, you know, again, like, as engineers, we might not feel like designers or feel like, you know, uh, be intimidated by, like, kind of, uh, working with these kind of concepts, but yes. A/B testing is very feels very engineering, right? Yes. You have like uh, almost like an experiment where you have different kind of variations, and you're and you're using metrics, right? Yes. You're using mm -hmm. kind of concrete information. Even big teams with like you know big bands of very experienced designers still use mm -hmm. A/B testing, and yes. it's, it's definitely something that you know you mm -hmm. can do. And like you said, Firebase, I think is pretty easy yeah. to do it like with a remote config and things like that. Yeah, Firebase has, has a remote config which is free, so you can do like a lot of different. Uh, setups for the same thing. Mm -hmm. So even, for example, not only for design stuff, you can also change, for example, at 99, we, uh, or some of the developers did uh, some location uh, ranges changes mm -hmm. using remote config. So for oh. this kind of location, you can have this ranges, this mm -hmm. size of the ranges. Okay, yeah. So you can move it, uh, you can change it in, uh, without need to right, re uh, re relaunch the app. Relaunch the and then you can yes. see like what the optimal radius to yes. get like good yes. rides and stuff mm -hmm. are. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah. this is cool. And, and that's something that, you know, is kind of much more accessible to us, right? Like testing, like we were testing, again, we we're talking before, like it's almost like unit testing, right? Yes. You always kind of want to define like, you know, a good size unit test. You want to kind of, you know, use it to kind of poke holes yeah. in like your code and you can kind of do the same thing mm -hmm. with your design. Yes, definitely. Uh, which is really familiar. That's really cool. <laughs> um, another thing that uh, Walmart was talking to me about beforehand was design sprints. Yes. Um, and how they can be good for us engineers. Can you kind of mm -hmm. uh, talk about what they are and how they can help uh, us design pragmatically? Yes. As we say, design is actually uh, listen user more. So you, right. when, you're, when you're thinking about design, you need to, especially UX, design is just a visual, but UX is actually like behind the whole, uh, the, the whole magic behind the experience. Yeah. Yes. So you need to actually be uh, half of the UX is user. So you need to, to understand the user. So design sprint is a way to understand the user. 
Uh, it's a framework made by Google, uh, actually for Google Ventures. They did the, this kind of framework. Uh, it's made by Jake Knapp. Uh, he's, he worked there uh, on the time. Basically, they did a, fi a five-day framework so you to tackle design, design issues or design challenges mm -hmm. for your company or for your uh, personal uh, issue. Mm -hmm. With this kind of uh, approach, you have this, a lot of steps. Understand the problem, listen to the user, uh, make a prototype of the, this kind of problem mm -hmm. instead of doing real life. Yeah. And then you can validate the with the user again. So mm -hmm. uh, it's a little more complicated than that, but in the simpler way, you can do this kind of stuff to understand the problem before actually going forward to the design mm -hmm. that and code it. And the, the great part is that you can do it just reading the book. They have a, a design sprint book actually in front of you. It run a design sprint for mm -hmm. your, your team or maybe your, some people. Mm -hmm. And it's easy. It's, it's very easy uh, method to, to follow because you understand the user. You can do a prototype quicker than development. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you, have, you have like low fidelity prototypes and yeah. medium and high fidelity, like prototypes uh, with it's interact. Like, yes. So it would be like sketching yeah, or sketching just like... or maybe like, like sketching or like yeah. coding something on, on HTML. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's just something really simple. Yes. Yes. You can have this kind of, uh, these three levels of uh, prototyping. So, which mm -hmm. is great because you can, you can actually see the difference. For example, if, if you want to validate some idea, you don't mm -hmm. need that, the fancy prototype, just the, the, the smallest one. But if you want to, to, to validate the whole flow of payments or something, mm -hmm. you need to have something more concrete. So uh, I see. A, a high fidelity for prot prototype mm -hmm. could be better. So again, it's like different granularities might have different fidelity for, for mm -hmm. prototypes, but yes. the idea is like iteration. Yes, like, exactly. Which is, again, mm -hmm. something we should be used to, like in like doing yeah. proof of concepts and figuring out, hey, can I use this new API? Mm -hmm. I'll start it with a simple project. And if it seems like it works, then I'll grow bigger and bigger. And then, of course, like yes. integrating it and then doing the more high fidelity, yeah, high fidelity type stuff. stuff. <laughs> so it sounds like, you know, really when you're designing as a sorry, designing as a developer, mm -hmm. it's all about kind of using concepts that we're familiar with as, as yes. engineers mm -hmm. and just leveraging, leveraging it more for UX and UI side. Yes, that, yes. That sound about right? Cool. Yeah, is that correct? Because uh, when you're thinking about design, it's, it's more of the same. You don't need to, to reinvent yourself to fix some design problems. Mm -hmm. Actually, you can come up with solutions by yourself if mm -hmm. you're a designer or developer, mm -hmm. which, which is good. Mm -hmm. But you don't need to work by yourself every time. Maybe you can show a prototype to a friend or make mm -hmm. like a public beta of your application. Oh, yeah, yeah. Alpha, uh, alpha beta testing. Mm -hmm. So you can gather as much as feedback as you can, mm -hmm. and then you can start to improve your application. So mm -hmm. if you have a, uh, maybe a approach that you want to start and you're like afraid because you don't have a designer, I don't think it's, it's a real problem because... You have design sprint, you have this A-B testing, remote mm -hmm. config, every time, everything that you need to don't get afraid of launching stuff and yeah. get it wrong on the first time. You're not getting it right on the first time. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, there's a lot of applications like LinkedIn and other uh, huge sites that usually had some weird versions of it. Like yeah, like that we all complained bad, about. And yeah. Little ugly and such. And then they like improving, mm -hmm. uh, big, baby steps, improving mm -hmm. and getting better. And that's why uh, we do this kind of approaches. So mm -hmm. we don't get afraid of yeah. getting wrong. So it doesn't have to be perfect to begin yes, with. Yes, yes, that's perfect. Have, so mm -hmm. I might have to read my Google Play Store reviews. Right? <laughs> yes, <Yeah>. yes. <laughs> Maybe you can like fix smaller stuff with just two or three review reviews of mm -hmm. that problem. Okay, so like don't be afraid of, you know, lower star reviews and try yeah, to... Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously if someone's not being very nice, but if someone has honest feedback, it mm -hmm. hurts sometimes, but it we need we need to we need the feedback to improve. Yeah, sure. actually, actually people that... Uh, give give feedback. Actually, they care more of your product, so they give yeah. you feedback because of that. Yeah, so. good good feedback. But yeah, good yes. feedback. Mm -hmm. People care. Yes. And like, so I'm, I'm guessing they probably would want to see you. Like, hey, like, and and mm -hmm. then you actually kind of, I guess, build some trust and communication when you kind of respond to that feedback. Yeah, and yeah, they definitely. They say, hey, like, oh, you fixed the thing. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's great. Awesome. <laughs> yes. Okay, so don't be afraid of feedback, and don't be afraid of designing if you're if you're a developer and yes. just using patterns that we're used to. Well, that's really awesome. Yes. I am actually now. I'm actually kind of, I, I, I will Excited. go out and work on my own project and start an alpha and, you know, try A-B testing and stuff. And it seems really kind of, okay, yes. cool. I yes. can do this. I can make a good application without being, Yay. you know, a fantastic designer. Thank you so much, Walmart. What's a pleasure. Well, um, if people wanted to find you on the internet, how can they do that? Uh, actually, I'm more active on Twitter. Mm -hmm. uh, my Twitter handle is Vomi Carvalho. I think I'll put it here because it's, it's, it's a yeah, little we'll hard to pronounce. Yeah, we'll put it like right around here, but. <laughs> yeah, it's a little hard to pronounce, but I'm, I'm very active on, on Twitter. And you can find me via email or maybe other other channels because as I'm, I'm GDE, I'm, my oh, mission right. uh, my mission is to to help people to get Android mm -hmm. better and like Kotlin or any other uh, stuff. And I'm, I'm I'm also a Design Sprint master, which is great. Oh, I can cool. help I can help people with Design Sprint as well. Awesome. Well, obviously, if you have any questions about Android, Kotlin, or Design Sprint in mm -hmm. particular, um, find one more and uh, get. He'd love to help you. Sounds yes. like yes. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure to be here. Oh, I was so happy to have you. Oh, and nice. thank you all. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Thank you. 
school. Thank you so much. Oh, it happened. <laughs> <laughs> nice to have. Oh, let me double check. Yeah. <laughs>